Hi, this is Ryan with Automatic Comics, and up next I've got an awesome unboxing with some Gold and Silver Age books, including one that's restored. So I thought I would talk briefly about how CGC designates restoration, kind of the different levels that are out there, and you know what to look out for. So stay tuned. Alright, so before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. So, like I said, I've got a, uh, a box here that has, I think, four books in it. Uh, you know, a mix of Gold and Silver Age, just some, some awesome books, I think. And uh, so, I'm gonna cut into this and then we'll start talking about these books. Okay, uh, so the first book here is a Silver Age book. It is just a, a beautiful book, and I was really excited to get this one. Uh, this is Batman number 169, and this is the second Silver Age appearance of the Penguin. It is this, you know, incredible purple cover, and this is a, a really high grade, obviously, a 9.2, uh, and you can just see how, how clean this book looks, you know, in this, in this high grade. Um, now I, I did bring another book up here. Uh, so this is Batman number 155, and this is the first appearance of uh, Penguin in the Silver Age. And so that's the, that's always the, the tricky thing with, uh, with these characters that have been around for a long time. They, you know, they have their first appearances back in the Golden Age that cost just an absolute fortune. Um, I'll plug the uh, a picture of the first appearance of the Penguin up here. It's a really unassuming cover. It's just a picture of like a boat. And I think I've maybe talked about it in a prior video when I did that uh, that unboxing for the uh, the Batman number uh, 155. But I mean, me personally, I I like this I like this cover more than the uh, than his first his first appearance. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of purple covers, and that one really has a lot of purple. So uh, you know, but they're you know for two pretty cool covers one you know is a dragon cover which is always fun and then the other one is this purple cover he's he's on both of them which is always nice that's always the, the tough part with the golden age is a lot of times the characters don't actually appear on the cover and with their first appearances it's it's pretty rare uh so silver age that starts to change more and obviously now you know they're always throwing <laughs> them on the covers for the most part so um but yeah you know awesome purple cover beautiful high grade uh, very happy to get that book now, the next book, let's see what comes out here. Ah, okay. So, uh, this is a Golden Age pre-code horror books from 1952, and this is Black Cat Mystery Comics number 41. And, you know, it's got this, I don't know, this creepy, like, demon bear bat thing grabbing this guy off a cliff. <laughs> he's holding on for dear life, but I'm pretty sure he's screwed. And um, uh, Black Cat Mystery Comics uh, has, has kind of an interesting run. Um, let's, uh, let's set this one over here. So from issues 1 through 29, uh, it's actually kind of like the, the Golden Age version of Black Cat. And there are some, there are some pretty cool covers in there, like uh, issue 29 is a, a bondage, kind of like witch-burning type cover that, that she's on. Uh, but then at issue 30, it transitions to... Uh, this, you know, Black Cat Mystery. And she's still in the book for a little while, uh, but eventually it starts to get into these kind of more traditional pre-code horror type covers. Uh, issue 33 you know, is an electrocution cover, and issue 50 is one of the most famous pre-code horror covers that's out there. You know, again, put a picture up here. It's this uh, cover where this guy's face is just like melting off from a radiation, you know, that, that they're showing melting his face. And I mean, that book goes for crazy money. A, a 3.5 sold in December for $6,500, and a 5.0 sold in October for 8200 So, I mean, that book is really, really expensive in any grade, over $1,000 kind of like per point. Uh, but 
I mean, it is one of the most desired uh, pre-code horror covers, and uh, you know it, the, the price really kind of shows it. But but this one, it, you know, it's just kind of a cool cover in that run. The the other thing that I thought was really you know kind of good or fun about this one is, I mean, it's a nice grade. It's a 6.5, but you can see it's also uh, a white pages copy. So uh, you know, like I said, I, I'm not I'm not real big into to the page quality side. I am perfectly fine buying brittle page books. But if I can get a white page copy for, especially for Golden Age, I mean, 52, almost 70 years ago, uh, I, I will gladly take that. And those definitely command a premium when you're talking about those older books. So uh, I was happy to get that, you know, colors really pop and it's a, it's a clean book for, for that old 6.5. All right, uh, so let's see, which one I'm gonna come out next? Ah, okay, so this, this is, I'd say this was, I, I, it's, it's hard for me to say if this was the book I was most excited to get or, or the other one that's down there. Now, this is a CBCS graded book. You know, I, said, I, I don't buy CBCS quite as often, but especially when you're talking rare golden age books, uh, you, you really can't be picky <laughs> so much about the, you know, who the grading company is. You know, when you see a book like this come up, you, you try to get it. And this is... Fight Comics number 40 and it's from 1945 uh, October of 1945 you know right at the end of World War II and you know you can see this one this one has a lot going for it you've got you know the the Nazi you know a swastika on the cover a, you know a Nazi officer over here then you've got these you know these cool like skulls that have let's see them it's, you know diamonds in their eyes you know and then you know like some bones and everything down here and then combined with that, you've got, you know, this good girl art bondage cover. And I mean, this, this cover has a lot going for it. And again, uh, uh, this one, you can see 6.5, which is a nice grade, but white pages. So, I mean, this is 1945. I mean, that's 76 years ago. And to have a white pages copy of, of this book is incredible. And, you know, it's a, it, it's a really clean looking book. Uh, I think there's a little staining on the back. That's what really kind of knock the grade down uh, from anything but yeah so there's a there's a little stain kind of like right here and otherwise this book I mean you can see like this is a really really clean book I mean it's like there's there's barely a spine tick on this book um, so it, it's an incredible copy and I was real real excited to get this book um, now uh, this one is, uh, it's do was done by a, a, the same cover artist that I have mentioned in a, a prior unboxing. So a book that I had purchased uh, recently from Golden Age Guru in one of his claim sales was this one, which is Ranger Comics number 26. And I, uh, this is a, a classic cover. It's one of these, you know, good girl art headlights covers. And it's done by Joe Doolin. And he, you, uh, he also did this book. And, and you can tell, you know, you can, once you start to see these different, you know, artists, you can see they draw things very similarly and you can start to pick out covers that they've done uh, just kind of on site. You can see that, you know, how he depicted this woman is, is very similar in both covers. Um, but uh, this one was also 1945, two months later, uh, December of 1945. Uh, this is a, Fight Comics is also a great run to get into if you're looking to kind of start getting into Golden Age books. It's a, it's a pretty long run. It goes into somewhere up in the 80s for the total number of issues. And it starts off with these World War II type covers, you know, war covers. Uh, then at issue 49, it transitions to jungle covers. Uh, so I'll, I'll plug in, you know, a couple pictures here. Uh, issue 49 and then issue 52 is pretty cool. There's, uh, it's a character that's called Tiger Girl. And, uh, you know, most of those, those books depict her on the cover. And then right near the end of the run, it trans transitions back into kind of some uh, war type covers. But... It, it definitely has that uh, a lot of options. Traditionally, a lot of the good girl art, the World War II covers, the jungle covers, bondage covers, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it has, it has a lot of variety for, uh, for Golden Age and a lot of the books are pretty affordable. Now there are some, you know, like, like this one, when you have certain elements on the cover, like the, you know, swastika and bondage and that kind of thing, you tend to get higher prices on those on those books, but there are a lot that are, are very affordable, so it's a, I think it's a good run to start kind of, you know, dipping your toes into if you're looking to, to get into Golden Age books. 
All right, so now the, the last one here, and I'm, I'm glad it, it saved it to the end because then this will work well for uh, transitioning into to talking about restoration. So if you're newer to CGC or you know just kind of not really you know as familiar with their different label types, um, they you know you have their traditional universal label which is which is this one. This is the blue label. It means it's just the book is unaltered. Uh, there's there's it's just that's what the book is. There's no uh, additions to it like a signature or anything like that. Uh, if you see a purple label, a purple label means that that book has been restored at some level. And now sometimes that, that restoration can be a, uh, a big deterrent for people to purchase those books. But when you're talking about the Golden Age and especially rare Golden Age books, older Golden Age books, it, it doesn't really have as much of an impact on the value as you might think because there aren't a lot of them and when you get an opportunity to even pick one up you you know you, you go for it so this is mr mystery number six and i mean this this cover is awesome <laughs> this cover has uh, pretty much everything going for for a pre-code horror book you know you've got these you know, skeleton guys on there. You've got, you know, a headlights cover, good girl art cover, bondage cover, torture cover, whatever you want to call it. It's, I mean, they're rolling this woman into, I don't know what it is, a vat of boiling acid or water. And, you know, this other guy in the back, you know, that's being carried off and everything. So, I mean, this, this cover is, is pretty incredible. And, you know, I, I don't really care that, <laughs> that it, that it's restored. So this is a, Tony Mortallero cover, so you can see kind of his little you know, signature down there. And I, I consider this to be the second best cover, if not the best cover in the entire run. It's the it's the second most valuable cover. The most valuable cover is Mr. Mystery number 12. And uh, you know, put that up here, it's this famous needle in the eye <laughs> cover that uh, a lot of uh, Golden Age collectors really try to get. Uh, that one, a 1 1.8 sold for 1,500 in January, and a 5.0 sold for about 5,700 in May of last year. So it's it's a price. That one's a pricey book. Uh, this one I'd say is is number two on that kind of level of of, of price. Uh, but in terms of the cover content and everything, I, I actually I, I like this one more. But um, so yeah, with with that, I, and now I'll, I just wanted to kind of go over restoration a little bit because I, I don't know how familiar everybody is with it, and there can be some confusing aspects to it especially with how CGC changed their labels. So the first thing, uh, so if you look at the if you look at the label, this is one of their modern labels. So this is what they look like now. You can see at the top, it says moderate C3. And so there are the, the, the important parts of kind of identifying the type of restoration that's on this book is that letter and then the number. So the letter, the first part is what's the quality of the restoration. And so this is from kind of from CGC's website and A means it's excellent. So if you see a, a letter of, if you see something like A1, A2, A is excellent, B is fine and C is poor. C is generally considered to be amateur restoration. You know, somebody that was sitting at home kind of like filling it in with a Sharpie, something like that. Um, but from uh, the CGC site, you know, I'll just kind of just so, you're, you know, you're aware. Uh, with A, you're generally going to have high quality materials. Um, the color matching will be effectively perfect. Uh, you know, you wouldn't be able to notice the differences. And the piece fill, so if somebody, if there was some missing piece on the cover, it's going to fill in perfectly. You're not going to be able to see it, at least from the front. Uh, you can generally, the way you can identify it is if you look in the inside the cover, you can see uh, some lines and things like that that identify that there was a piece that was added there. And the book really feels natural. It, it feels like what you would expect a book uh, from that age to, you know, to feel like. And if you have any pieces that are replaced, like the, the cover or the centerfold, you're going to have effectively perfect staple alignment and everything's just going to look natural. Now you can have also clean staples or replaced staples, but they've got to be vintage staples, so staples from that time. And uh, the last thing is if you have married covers or pages, um, the, the size really has to, has to match. And they've been professionally attached, you know, not somebody just, you know, gluing them in, you know, something like that. Now with a B, uh, that's considered fine. So it's kind of in between professional and amateur. And you're going to have materials like pencil, filling things in, crayon, chalk. Uh, you might have some re-glossing on the cover. 
and you could have peace fill from what are called cadavers. So cadavers are other books that were, you know, much lower quality, and so they would take pieces from that and fill it in on the cover. Um, and then the, that fill is going to be relatively obvious once you start inspecting. It may not be from, you know, like arm's length, but once you start looking at it closely, you're going to be able to tell. And uh, you'll have things like cover cleaning are going to start to impact the, the actual appearance of the cover. You maybe see some fading. And everything's not quite as tight and, and perfect as you would expect with a A-level a restoration. Now, the last one, C, which is what, what this is, you know, this is amateur restoration. You're going to see things like glue, pen, marker, uh, you know, you might see white out, just very amateur materials. And uh, kind of their qualifier is that you'll be able to see that there were pieces replaced at arm's length. So you can really tell from pretty close that there's a, there are things replaced on that cover. Uh, there's going to be, you know, bad color matching. And that's, that's actually one that you can see kind of here. So you can see where this... Uh, you know, this color touches. So you, there, were, there were these different creases that are on the cover and they've been colored over and you can see how there's, you know, a difference in color from the actual cover. And so that, that's where somebody probably used a Sharpie or, or something like that. And that type of restoration is always really easy to spot um, because what you can do is, well, one, this one is very easy like that, but the other thing that, that you can do is if you look on the interior cover, you will generally see bleed through. And so when you, what I mean by bleed through is like somebody used a Sharpie and now you can see the black or you can see the pink or red or whatever color they were, they were filling in bleed through to the back of the page. And so that's why C restoration can be so hard to remove because it's permeated the entire page. And so a lot of times you have to completely cut out pieces to, to fully remove that restoration if that was your goal. If you wanted to try to resubmit this for a blue label. Now, when you're looking for a book, if you want to try to find a book that say you are going to try to have that restoration removed and then have it uh, sent back to CGC to try to get a blue label, or CGC also does restoration removal through, I believe the CCS company, I think that's where it's done, but um, so you can have them try to remove restoration as well. And it's an expensive process, so you really, you don't kind of want to do it on a, on a cheaper book. It's going to be something that's going to cost you quite a bit of money. And so it's something that you'd maybe only do on a, on a much more expensive book. It can also take a, a lot of time. Uh, but if you're trying to target a book for restoration removal, you want to target books that have the A type of restoration on it. Uh, because it's not going to have things where the marker or, or it has bled through or things have have really kind of like stuck onto the page that's going to cause more damage when it's removed because a lot of times that it's kind of the thing you don't you want to try to prevent damaging the book further when you're removing that restoration um, so really for restoration removal you want to target a or maybe even b types of restoration but once you start to get into c yeah you can have it removed but it's not always easy and I'll, i'm actually going to show you an example so this is a book that is listed on eBay right now. It's just something I saw, so I, th I think it's worthwhile to point out so that people can see how problematic this can be. And so this is right here. It's Famous Funnies number 215. And it's this awesome Frazetta cover, and it has a crease that's right down the middle. And you can see that this book still is marked as restored. And what I did was I went into GoCollect and I looked for prior sales and I found this same book. And this same book previously had uh, a purple label and, but it looked much nicer, <laughs> you know, because it said there's amateur color touch on the cover and you can see that you don't see the crease. You can, you can see that they tried to have that, that removed and then resubmitted and then they still got the purple label and it is likely because it bled through and they couldn't completely get rid of the, the color touch. And the thing that I want to point out is on the listing, it says, you know, this is a small amount of color touch, I think. It's like easy to remove. Clearly not, <laughs> because someone already tried and they did not achieve that goal and it is still a purple label. So if you bought that thinking you could maybe remove that restoration, you may be very sorely mistaken that, that you, uh, you can't. And now you've spent a lot of money on a book that you then can't get into that, you know, blue label without doing serious damage to the book. Now the next thing I wanted to touch on with this is the is the number, and so the number is really just how much restoration is there, 
And so for uh, the smaller the number, the less restoration. So one is slight, two is slight to moderate, three is moderate, four is moderate to extensive, and five is extensive. And uh, they have very specific kind of designations for what falls into those different areas. So slight is all conservation work, reglossing, interior lighting, piece fill, uh, no more than the size of two bindery chips, light color touch in small areas like spine stress, corner crease, bindery chip fill, married cover, interior pages, this kind of thing. Uh, then you go slight to moderate, it's piece fill up to uh, one half inch by one half inch, and or color touch covering up to one inch by one inch, interior piece fill up to one inch by one inch. Moderate is piece fill up to the size of one inch by one inch, and or color touch covering two inches by two inches. And then uh, moderate to extensive is piece fill up to two inches by two inches or color touch or, and or color touch up to four inches by four inches. And extensive, uh, any piece fill over two inches by two inches or color touch over four inches by four inches. And so you can see this one is moderate, means there's color touch covering up to two inches by two inches. And that's, that's really the, the main thing on there. So this one also has glue, tear seals, uh, spine split sealed, that kind of thing. And those other ones can be relatively easily removed, but this, this color touch up here, that would be the big problem if you really wanted to, to get rid of that on this book. Obviously, you know, again, if you're looking for something that you want to remove restoration, lower the number, better. You know, an A1, something like that, A2 is, is the easiest that you're going to have to get that stuff removed. Now there's one other side of restoration that I, I just I wanted to touch on because I think it can be really confusing to some people and potentially trip you up when you're looking at a book, especially if you're in some type of auction or something like that and books are coming up quickly and you maybe don't really uh, pay close enough attention to it, and that is conservation. And so if you see a label that looks like this, that is a conserved label and it's this gray color, and I really wish they did not use that color for this label because it looks way too close to the blue label. And so I think it's potentially very confusing, and if you look at it quickly and you aren't paying really close attention, you might actually accidentally confuse it for a blue label, and then what you're actually buying is a restored book. Now, conservation has a slightly different definition than restoration, so the conservation repairs are, are, are said to be performed with the intention of preserving the structural or chemical integrity of the book uh, using professional techniques and materials. It excludes aesthetic repairs such as color touch and piece fill. So the type of restoration that it has to fall into is an A1. So it's an A1 of those specific uh, options that do not include those things like color touch, you know, where you're not improving the, the view of the book. And so this is one area where there's a big difference between how CGC grades and the definitions that are in Overstreet. Because Overstreet actually says, you know, in certain grades, you're allowed to replace staples with period correct staples. But if you do that and submit a book to CGC, you're going to get a conserved label. So just something to be aware of. Uh, that there are these other types of labels out there and it really is it's, it's a restored label but it's like a little less restored <laughs> so um, you know just be careful if you see those I would value them very similarly to purple labels you know maybe a little higher but you know very similarly to purple labels but they can be confusing so you know watch out for them don't inadvertently buy one and pay a blue label price because it is not a blue label so one other thing that you might be wondering is how do you interpret the value of a restored book? And you know that can be a really tricky question. One of the things you have to take into account is how many of those books are there out there. I mean, the, the less total there are, really the less separation you're gonna have in the, in the, the price of that book between a, an unrestored and a restored. Then you also have to look at what the level of restoration is. Uh, if I've got a restored book that takes it up to a really high grade, you know, a 9.0, 9.6, something like that, it's going to command a much smaller percentage of the value of an unrestored book because it likely, if that restoration is removed, it would drop it to a blue label that is much, much lower. And so that's really one of the ways that I like to do it. I mean, I, I definitely try to find prior sales, but there are way less purple label books out there on the census and so way less sales so it can be a little more difficult to price uh, but so the way that i like to do it is i like to look at the book and think okay if this restoration wasn't here what would the grade be 
and that's really how I'm going to value that book for, for the most part. I mean, you might lower it a little bit below that just because some people, you know, you're, you're losing some buyers when you have a purple label versus a blue label. Um, but for the most part, you know, if I saw this book and I think like, you know, without this restoration, it's a 2-0. I'll probably value it around a 2-0, you know, and, and so that's that's just me. That's how, that's how I like to do it. You can do it however you want. You know, the value of the book is whatever somebody will pay for it. But, uh, you know, that that's my way of interpreting that value when I'm looking to go out and, and purchase a book that has a, a purple label on it. Now, the, the last thing that I wanted to talk about is how CGC has changed the labels. Then that can be potentially a little confusing because, you know, you can see here now that it's much clearer now. Uh, you know, where they've got the letter and the number and, and you know, they've got their, the rules that are on their website and everything is pretty straightforward. But what it used to be was that they would designate it as A or P. And the thing that can confuse you is that if you think A means the A that I talked about before, you'd be very wrong. A actually means C. A means amateur and P means professional. And so if, if you've got one of these older labels that doesn't use this type of style, make sure you don't buy one that says A thinking you're getting a professional level restoration. It's actually referring to amateur. And uh, it, it, the one that you want is the one that's a P that stands for professional. And I'll, I'll look for some and I'll, you know, I'll try to pop some covers in up here that, that show that just so you can kind of get an idea what that difference is. But, you know, that's uh, everything I wanted to talk about with this video. I had, thought I had some awesome books. I was really excited to show these. Uh, just, I, I love getting these Golden Age books, especially these, these rare ones like this, and, um, and hopefully trying to get other people more interested in them and uh, you know, trying to get out looking for them. And hopefully you learn something about restoration to, to help if you're ever out there looking for, for those books. And just remember, when you're getting into Golden Age, restoration is not, you know, it's not the, the label of death like you might think with like a more modern book. I mean, if there's only 50 copies, you know, about of this book out there that are graded in existence doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter nearly as much if one is restored or not. It just, you know, happy to get that book. So remember to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this, and I will see you in the next video.